casually called a meeting of the three amigos. But when the prime minister hosts the presidents of the United States and Mexico, serious issues trump friendship. And even the best of friends can clash on the more contentious ones, Arctic sovereignty, trade, and above all, security. Our chief political correspondent, Keith Bogue, is in Montebello, Quebec, covering the Leaders' Summit. Keith? Ian, it's billed as a two-day trilateral meeting, but it isn't really two days long. And some of the most important meetings aren't trilateral. Today's, for instance. It's a familiar sight to almost anyone with a TV, but suddenly here it was for real. Marine One, the presidential helicopter, out on the lawn at the Chateau Montebello in rural Quebec. President Bush may not be popular from coast to coast to coast, but he got a warm welcome here from the hotel staff, including the chef. Yeah, thank you. Which is a good thing, because the chef is cooking his meals. Outside the summit site, protesters weren't friendly at all. There were confrontations with police. But none of it seemed to have much impact here, and Stephen Harper did his best to minimize it further. I heard it's nothing. Couple hundred? Hundred? Sad. Bush and Harper met privately with their officials for 90 minutes, a so-called bilat. Officials say they discussed their growing concerns about the Northwest Passage and Russia's recent attempts to make symbolic claims there. They agree it's not Russian territory, but Bush won't say it's Canadian either. And they talked about the competing desires for a border that's simultaneously open and secure. The border issue is fast becoming a frustrating symbol on both sides of how security concerns trump everything else in the U.S. A recent experiment with trying to speed up clearance at the Fort Erie Buffalo Crossing was cancelled by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, or DHS. That was an issue that had the support of the President, the support of the Prime Minister, the support of uh, both parties in Congress and the local communities, and yet DHS on its own in April walked away from the table. So if, they, if that is allowed to stand, if pre-clearance doesn't go through, that'll be an indication to me at least um, that the relationship's out of whack and that basically the cops are in charge. The feeling that the cops are in charge in the U.S. is a familiar complaint to Ann McClellan. She was public safety minister when the liberals were in power and had to deal with the lingering anxiety about the 9-11 attacks, which frustrated attempts to make the border more open. Sometimes the United States forgets that we actually can help them, that they've got friends who want to help them. And it's in our self-interest, economic self-interest or otherwise, to attempt to work together and to help them and help ourselves at the same time. The new public safety minister, Stockwell Day, got some bike time with the president to make the same case. And a little later, the prime minister had an unscheduled meeting with the president of Mexico. Felipe Calderon is leaving early. He planned an extended stay, but with Hurricane Dean bearing down on his country, he's decided to head for home Tuesday afternoon. If you're worried that won't give them time to finish all of their business, forget about it. That's what officials are for. And they've mostly written the final communique already. In fact, parts of it on border security began to leak on the weekend. Ian? Back. As Keith mentioned, the Prime Minister appeared to brush off the protesters of the summit, calling their presence sad. But as Dan Halton reports, several hundred did turn out, some of them eliciting a very different response from police. If you build it, they will come. And this security fence stretching around the Chateau Montebello attracted nearly 1,000 protesters. Police designated this field for the protesters, but they refused it instead choosing to march right up to the front gates of the hotel. Okay, my message to Stephen Harper is to open the doors, to open the doors to the Canadian people and get import, input from the Canadian people, that he needs to hear the voice of Canadians. Johan Juarez traveled from Veracruz, Mexico, to be heard. Our country is in a very poor condition right now because of the uh, politics that these guys are applying as far as the economics, uh, the economic part of the agenda. The closer the protesters got to police, the more police pushed back. When police called for reinforcements, protesters who described themselves as family friendly retreated. That's when more militant demonstrators, though fewer in number, moved in and took on the riot squad. 
some provoked and tested police, lobbing stones, water bottles, even billiard balls. And the police retaliated, volleying tear gas at the protesters. That's, that's crazy. I don't know. We are here for a peaceful protest. But there with a the gas mask and a helicopter on top, keeping in watch, we were blocked on the way, but then the gain released, so it's all very scary. As the afternoon wore on, the clashes intensified. The air became thick with smoke from the tear gas. Police say officers sustained a couple of minor injuries. They detained a handful of unruly protesters, arresting four of them. By the end of the day, it appeared police had had enough. They fired rubber bullets at the protesters, finally dispersing the crowd. Their eyes watery and their muscles sore, the protesters left, vowing to come back again tomorrow. Dan Halton, CBC News, Montebello, Quebec.